Welcome back to the channel developers, it's Chris from Morales. And in the next couple of videos, we will be looking at the users section of the documentation. From Morales.io, if we head on over to documentation, scroll down to the users section, and you'll see from here, there are a couple of sections we may have covered already. For example, the crypto wallet login, the email login, and also how to get information from the current logged in or authenticated user. But over the next couple of videos, we're going to be covering off the rest of these sections to understand a bit more exactly what the Morales.user object is. Now, we've already briefly touched on crypto login and email login. We did that when we built our boilerplate code previously. And you're familiar with the current user object as to how to find out whether a user is authenticated uh, into your application or not. Now, in this example, we're going to go back to the boilerplate code here, which is just allowing us to authenticate our user with MetaMask if they're on a desktop. And once they're signed in, you get this. You have a logout button, which when clicked, has this alert attached to it and then takes you back to the sign in page. Now, I'm going to be using an emulator for my phone here. And uh, so this is just exactly showing you what you can see on my mobile. And when we click on the sign in button from the mobile version of this app, instead of just getting an automatic uh, MetaMask login, we now get this. And this gives us different options that we can connect to. So if we want to use MetaMask, we can click the MetaMask icon here and MetaMask will load up and then give us our connect, so which we can click. And I'll click sign. And then it says we can go back to the browser. It's actually hidden here, but the link is underneath this recording button. So I'll just click back and you can see that we're logged into our application. Uh, so we'll click log out and we've got the same alert and then we'll click sign in again. But this time we'll maybe use a different one. We'll use trust and uh, that asks for a signature request as well down the bottom. Once we click that, then it will, I might've clicked that twice. It then says we can go back to our browser and there we go. We can see that we're logged back in again. So let's start off with the documentation. We'll go under the intro first of all, and we'll just explain that whenever you have a new user that gets authenticated into your application, their information is going to be added to your database. So if I spin up my database here, just load up the server page and open up a dashboard for one of my servers. On the left hand side, you'll see that there is a number of tables that populate. Uh, there is a user table here, which is where the user data is stored. And all of this sort of balance and token and transaction information is based on my users. As soon as a user authenticates with my application, the server will sync their address with my database. So all of their transactions and balances are pulled in directly into that database. If they've been on AVAX or Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum or Polygon, it will pull that data in automatically. So this section of the documentation explains that the Morales.user, that user table with all of that data, is a subclass of the Morales object. And it's got all the same features and schema and key value interface as the other uh, tables that you'll come across in the database. And there are some specific security functions with this user table. It's a little bit more locked down than some of the other tables that you'll find, for example. And you can add information to your users if you wish to. It goes on to explain that authentication can be done in different ways. You can log a user into your application with a crypto wallet, or you can log them in with a combination of a username and password or an email and password. But let's jump first of all into the crypto login. So the Morales authentication allows you to authenticate users on any blockchain with just a single line of code. The single line of code that we have been using was Morales.authenticate. That was it. That's what this would do. Okay, that's Morales.authenticate. Automatically assumes that you want to use MetaMask. And this is the instructions for how you can do that. Just be aware that whenever you do use MetaMask, there is no gas required to request or sign a signature. It's just used as proof that, that is the owner of the account that you're trying to interact with on your application. There's a bit of information about how that works. There's a video there about MetaMask authentication, but you may already be familiar with that from our previous part of the videos. Now, Wallet Connect is another option. So Morales.authenticate with no options in there just assumes you want to use MetaMask, but you might not. You might want to use a different crypto wallet login. And Wallet Connect is a provider that you can use for that. There's a five minute video here from Malik that explains that, how to use that in JavaScript, but also in React.js. And if you want to use Wallet Connect, there's just a couple of other steps that you need to follow. For example, you need to install this script tag in the head of your HTML. If you're using NPM, you'll need to install uh, wallet connect slash web three dash provider. And then once that's done and you've installed it one way or the other, you'll then need to call it 
the you know, call the authentication method like we've done before. But this time we're going to pass in this object, an extra option that says provider is wallet connect. Okay. There are other options in addition to this, if you want to provide, for example, the default chain that uh, it automatically loads up. Um, you can pass in the chain ID as an option here. If you need to know more about what the chain ID is, let me load up a website that might help you. Here we go. Uh, this is chainlist.org. And this will show you the chain ID for all the different chains that you might want to populate as default, providing we support them. So Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, etc. You'll be able to find those chain ideas here if you wish to. Let's close that down, come back. So that would be if you wanted to specify a chain ID. Now you remember, if we go back to this emulator over here, when I clicked sign in, we had six different options here that you could use as a, a wallet connect, uh, crypto wallet login. Now the reason we can only see six here is because I actually copied this particular code into my application. And this allows you to filter the mobile linking options and reorder them depending on how you want them to appear in this list. So this now this list now shows Rainbow first and then MetaMask and then Argent and so on and so on and so on. The majority of the time MetaMask or Wallet Connect as a solution will, will be more than adequate for you. But there may be occasions where you want to use a custom wallet and it is possible to use any Web3 provider. If you want more information on that, please use this section of the documentation. You'll need to import. Uh, I believe it's Taurus will be the solution. You'll need to import the provider. You'll need to overwrite the standard Morales enable uh, method with this particular code. And then you'll need to create the Taurus provider as well. So it's a little bit more copy pasting, but after that, you should be good to go. And then um, you can enable uh, Web3 by following this particular code here. Uh, I personally don't or have never needed to use Taurus, but uh, if you do need a custom wallet login, these will be the instructions that you'll follow. For everything else, Wallet Connect and MetaMask will be just fine for you. Uh, you also have non EVM chain login options available. So Elrond is an example. Uh, if you need it to be working for your application, there's a bit of a setup that's required here. Here are the steps to do that. Uh, there's a video by Ryan here that walks you through that process as well. And then once you've done the authentication and you have a user logged in, whichever method you've chosen, you will then be given a user object. And the user object typically will return information that would look like this when you call it. And in there, there'll be the class name, the ID. And more importantly, you have your attributes, the user attributes. And in there, you'll typically find your ETH address and the accounts that may be connected to that particular user if there are more than one. The access control list as to uh, who would have access to this particular user object. Uh, and by default, it's the user only that will have access to it. But you could change it if you want to. And then the username, that's automatically or randomly generated with a crypto wallet login. And um, you could overwrite that if you wanted to by setting something else. The, the ETH address has its own table in our database, which is typically down here. And you can see the different uh, tables that would appear in here. And under there, it just shows you that typically it would be updated with information like this. Okay, now, we mentioned on the left hand side of our table that there's a whole bunch of extra tables which we didn't create that were automatically generated. So depending on the usage of your users and where they've been across those chains, it may populate these extra tables based on the chains that they've used. And because you're constantly watching the user thinking their on chain activity, uh, more tables may be added depending on what they've done. These are the different chain prefixes that will appear, for example, at this part of these tables. And just before we go into the code, it is worth explaining that if you ever need to delete a user from your database, don't just go into the users and delete that one user. Make sure that you also follow these instructions to delete the user session, the balance and the address from the corresponding tables. The other thing I did change when I was signing in using my crypto wallet login is the sign in message. So I changed my sign in message here. So to view that message, we just go back to the emulator here and I'll just click on trust wallet, click on connect. And there you go. So you can see here my new custom message. Hello. And that's how you would change it. I'll show you how I did that in the code in a moment. And scrolling down, changing the app icon in MetaMask. MetaMask. Well, the instructions to do that are actually on MetaMask. So you can follow that link if you need to do that. OK, so let's hop over to Visual Studio Code and see what we did here. 
And this is boilerplate code, very, very similar to what we produced together to create the login logout uh, DAP. And I've just made a couple of changes. I removed jQuery and Bootstrap from up the top. Not important. I just it wasn't being used. I didn't need it. Uh, I added the wallet connect script. That was the first thing that we saw as an instruction in the documentation. So I added that here. If we scroll down, I've got the new initialization function. We talked about that in previous videos as well. And the login function. OK, so in here I've done a, a couple of things. So the first thing I did is initialize a variable called current user. We check the morales.user.current method and that will provide us with a user object if a user is logged in. So what we want to check first of all is do we have a user logged in or not? If we do not have a user logged in, then we need to authenticate them. We need to sign them in. So from here, I run a check to see whether or not are they using a mobile device or are they using a desktop? And that's not always the easiest thing to check. So I've got this sort of crude um, solution here that just checks the type of screen that the user has. Because if the screen orientation is undefined, it's typically a mobile device. But if it's not undefined, then it's a desktop device. And using that, we can handle which method they see when they're logged in. So on a mobile device, I want them to show the Wallet Connect login. So I've got the Wallet Connect login here. Now we're saying it's one line of code with Morales, and it certainly can be. You can just use this one line of code. Await Morales.authenticate and then pass in the provider Wallet Connect. That's it. That will work just fine. But I wanted to customize it. And rather than have it all on one long, long line that goes off the edge of the screen, um, I've just separated it so it looks like it's on multiple lines. But the options that I'm passing to it are a provider, which is Wallet Connect, same as it is here. I'm also then providing it with a sign in signing message called my new custom message. Hello. We saw that on the Trust Wallet example. And then I'm providing it with this mobile links array, which organizes my uh, options to these six. OK, so if we're on a mobile device, this is what we're going to be using as our authenticate. However, if it's not a mobile device, so it's just a regular desktop, then we'll just use our standard Morales to authenticate method. And that's it. Okay. So that's what this login function now does. And then it checks the user and it handles the CSS based on whether they're logged in or not. The logout hasn't changed. The check user function hasn't changed. The only other thing that I added was this document dot add event listener this handler at the bottom because I use a Apple phone and when you try and use Wallet Connect with an Apple phone, once you've signed your transaction, Apple pop up a different window that can sometimes cause the authentication to to not work as expected. Let me show you what it happens when it's not there. Blank that out and go back to the application. Let's just refresh that and then we'll click sign in. And we'll go to the trust wallet again. And then we'll sign this. It says go back to the browser. So we'll go back to the browser and you get that. So this open this page in trust. So you're like, okay, fine, open. So it takes you back to trust wallet. And then you think, okay, well, what's that's a bit confusing. So then you come back and it doesn't always log you in properly. So I just find that this is a bug specifically with Wallet Connect and iOS. Nothing to do with Morales. It's specifically with Wallet Connect, and they're aware of this. And on the forums, that's where I got that snippet of code. So once you go back and remove that, update your app, and refresh, and sign in. Back to Trust Wallet, connect, confirm, go back, then that message is gone and you've logged in. Okay. So that was just a simple fix, and it's I think it's only specifically iOS. It certainly was irritating me. Um, so if you're an iOS user, you probably have the same issue, but I think Android, it's fine. So uh, you shouldn't need to use this particular piece of code at the bottom. You could remove it or comment it out or keep it there for iOS users, whatever you like. So that is the application. So that has, if you like, handled a different authentication method for your user based on whether they're on desktop or mobile using either MetaMask directly or Wallet Connect, giving them lots of other crypto wallet options. If you want to give them an option to log in with Wallet Connect, whether they're on a desktop, then just remove this whole section of handling this screen orientation. Just remove that and just only use this Morales to authenticate with these options as your main login authentication.
All right, guys. So in the next one, let's go and take a look at the username password or the email login section.